Where is the time going? It is October the 13th. Incredible. Day 285 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter, and this is the Daily Radio Bible Podcast. We are about to do that thing that we do every day. We're about to spend some time now in God's Word. We're going to let His Word spend some time on us. I know how we need that. No doubt about that. If you're looking for a way and a community to help you build the habit of engaging with the Scriptures into your daily life, well... Welcome here. This is the place to do all those things and more. More than all of those things, what we desire is to have an encounter with the God who is love, to experience his presence in our life, to know his peace, and to begin to walk forward in this life with his joy. So welcome to everyone near and far today. Our journey in the Bible takes us back into the book of Nehemiah, chapters 11 and 12, then on to Psalm 1, and we'll finish our reading in Acts chapter 3. This is the word of the Lord. Nehemiah 11. The leaders of the people were living in Jerusalem, the holy city. A tenth of the people from the other towns of Judah and Benjamin were chosen by sacred lots to live there too while the rest stayed where they were. And the people commanded everyone who volunteered to resettle in Jerusalem. Here's a list of the names of the provincial officials who came to live in Jerusalem. Most of the people, priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants continued to live in their own towns and the various towns of Judah. But some of the people of Judah and Benjamin resettled in Jerusalem. From the tribe of Judah, Atahiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Mahalal, of the family of Perez, also Messiah, son of Baruch, son of Korhozah, son of Haziah, son of Adiah, son of Joarib, son of Zechariah, and the family of Shelah. There were 468 descendants of Perez who lived in Jerusalem, all outstanding men, from the tribe of Benjamin, Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joed, son of Padiah, son of Koliah, son of Messiah, son of Ithiel, son of Jeshiah. After him were Gabiah and Saliah, and a total of 928 relatives. Their chief officer was Joel, son of Zikri, who was assisted by Judah, son of Hasanua, second in command over the city. From the priest, Jediah, son of Joarib, Jachin and Sariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Merioth, son of Ahitub, the supervisor of the temple of God. Also 822 of their associates who worked at the temple. Also Adiah, son of Joram, son of Peliah, son of Amzi, son of Zechariah, son of Peshur, son of Milkijah, along with 242 of his associates who were heads of their families. Also Amashai, son of Azarel, son of Ahazai, son of Meshulameth, son of Emer, and 128 of his outstanding associates. Their chief officer was Zabdiel, son of Hagadalim. From the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Heshub, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, son of Buni, also Shabbatai and Josabad, who were in charge of the work outside of the temple of God. Also Mataniah, son of Mika, son of Zabdi, a descendant of Asaph, who led in thanksgiving and prayer. Also Bukubiah, who was Mataniah's assistant, and Abda, son of Shamua, son of Galal, son of Deduthan. In all, there were 284 Levites in the holy city. From the gatekeepers, Akub, Talmon, and 172 of their associates who guarded the gates, The other priests, Levites, and the rest of the Israelites lived wherever their family inheritance was located, in any of the towns of Judah. The temple servants, however, whose leaders were Ziha and Gishba, all lived on the hill of Ophel. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzi, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, a descendant of Asaph, 
whose families served as singers at God's temple. Their daily responsibilities were carried out according to the terms of a royal command. Pathahiah, son of Meshazabel, a descendant of Zerah, son of Judah, was the royal advisor in all matters of public administration. As for the surrounding villages, with their open fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Araba with its settlements, Dibon with its settlements, and Jakbiziel with its villages. They also lived in Jeshua, Molada, Beth Palet, Hezar Shual, Beersheba with its settlements, Ziklag, Makona with its settlements. They also lived in En Rimon, Zorah, Jermuth, Zonoa, and Ajilam with their surrounding villages. They also lived in Lachish, with its nearby fields in Azka, with its surrounding villages. So the people of Judah were living all the way from Beersheba in the south to the valley of Hinnom. Some of the people of Benjamin lived in Geba, Mikmash, Aija, and Bethel, with its settlements. They also lived in Anathoth, Nob, Aniah, Hazor, Ramah, Getiem, Hadid, Zeboim, Neblat, Lord, Ono, and the Valley of Craftsmen. Some of the Levites who lived in Judah were sent to live there with the tribe of Benjamin. Nehemiah 12 Here is a list of the priests and the Levites who returned with Zerubbabel, son of Shiltiel, and Jeshua the high priest, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maloch, Hatush, Shekaniah, Harim, Mermoth, Ido, Genathon, Abijah, Meneaimin, Moadiha, Bilgah, Shemaiah, Joirib, Jediah, Salu, Amak, Hilkiah, and Jediah. These were the leaders of the priests and their associates in the days of Jeshua. The Levites who returned with them were Jeshua, Banui, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Metaniah, who with his associates was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Their associates, Bakbukiah and Uni, stood opposite them during the service. Jeshua the high priest was the father of Joachim. Joachim was the father of Elishib. Elishib was the father of Joida. Joida was the father of Johanan. Johanan was the father of Jadua. Now when Joachim was high priest, the family leaders of the priests were as follows. Mariah was leader of the family of Sariah. Hananiah was the leader of the family of Jeremiah. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Ezra. Johanan was the leader of the family of Amariah. Jonathan was the leader of the family of Maloch. Joseph was the leader of the family of Shechaniah. Adna was the leader of the family of Harim. Elkai was the leader of the family of Mermoth. Zechariah was the leader of the family of Edo. Meshulam was the leader of the family of Genathon. Zikri was the leader of the family of Abijah. There was also a leader of the family of Menaim. Piltai was the leader of the family of Moadiah. Shamua was the leader of the family of Bilgah. Jehonathan was the leader of the family of Shemaiah. Matanai was the leader of the family of Joirib. Uzi was the leader of the family of Jediah. Kaliah was the leader of the family of Salu. Eber was the leader of the family of Amok. Heshobiah was the leader of the family of Hilkiah. Nathanael was the leader of the family of Jediah. A record of the Levite families was kept during the years when Eliashib, Joida, Johanan, and Jedua served as high priest. Another record of the priests was kept during the reign of Darius the Persian. A record of the heads of the Levite families was kept in a book of the history down to the days of Johanan, the grandson of Eliashib. These were the family leaders of the Levites, Heshabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, Banui, Kadmiel, and other associates who stood opposite them during the ceremonies of praise and thanksgiving. One section responded to the other as commanded by David, the man of God. This included Mataniah, Bakubiah, and Obadiah. Meshulam, Talmon, and Akub were the gatekeepers in charge of the storerooms at the gates. These all served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor, and of Ezra the priest and scribe. For the dedication of the new wall of Jerusalem, the Levites throughout the land were asked to come to Jerusalem to assist in the ceremonies. They were to take part in the joyous occasion with their songs of thanksgiving, 
and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres, the singers were brought together from the region around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophites. They also came from Beth Gilgal and the rural areas near Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had built their own settlements around Jerusalem. The priests and Levites first purified themselves. Then they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. I led the leaders of Judah to the top of the wall and organized two large choirs to give thanks. One of the choirs proceeded southward along the top of the wall to the Dung Gate. Hoshiah and half the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshullam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah. Then some of the priests who played trumpets, including Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zakur, a descendant of Asaph. And Zechariah's colleagues were Shemaiah, Azrahel, Malali, Galiah, Maaiah, Nathanel, Judah, and Hanani. They used the musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra the scribe led this procession. At the fountain gate, they went straight up the steps on the ascent of the city wall toward the city of David. They passed the house of David and then proceeded to the water gate on the east. The second choir gave thanks, went northward around the other way to meet them. I followed them together with the other half of the people along the top of the wall past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall, then past the Ephraim gate to the old city gate, past the fish gate and the tower of Hananel, and on to the Tower of the Hundred. Then we continued on to the Sheep Gate and stopped at the Guard Gate. The two choirs that were giving thanks then proceeded to the Temple of God, where they took their places. So did I, together with a group of leaders who were with me. We went together with the trumpet-playing priests, Eliakim, Messiah, Menaimin, Micaiah, Eloaniah, Zechariah, and Hanani, and the singers... Messiah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, Uzi, Johanan, Melchizedek, Elam, and Eser. They played and sang loudly under the direction of Jezariah, the choir director. Many sacrifices were offered on that joyous day, for God had given the people cause for great joy. The women and children also participated in the celebration, and the joy of the people of Jerusalem could be heard far away. On that day, Men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the offerings, the first part of the harvest, and the tithes. They were responsible to collect from the fields outside the towns the portion required by the law for the priests and the Levites. For all the people of Judah took joy in the priests and Levites and their work. They performed the service of their God in the service of purification, as commanded by David and his son Solomon, and so did the singers and the gatekeepers. The custom of having choir directors to lead the choirs in hymns of praise and thanksgiving to God began long ago in the days of David and Asaph. So now, in the days of Zerubbabel and of Nehemiah, all Israel brought a daily supply of food for the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Levites. The Levites, in turn, gave a portion of what they received to the priests, the descendants of Aaron. Psalm 1 Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Acts 3 Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service as they approached the temple. A man lame from birth was carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the Beautiful Gate, so he could beg from people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money, but Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, 
but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and straightened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking and leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what's so surprising about this and why stare at us as though we had made this man to walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling all what the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things. As God promised long ago through his holy prophets, Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, Anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you were included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, Through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you, people of Israel, to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. And now may our God, who has blessed us, may he now give a blessing to the reading of this word. Amen. Peter says, I'll give you what I have. But what is it that Peter has that this man, this lame man from birth needs? The lame man expects so little, but he's about to get far more than he ever, ever thought. Luke tells us that Peter shares his faith in the one who forgives sins who sees our inability to walk beyond the beautiful gate and into God's life. Over and over, the lame man has been placed at the beautiful gate, but he's never able to enter beyond into the temple area, that place where God and life are. Instead, he sits outside the gate and he waits and he begs and he expects so little. And then Peter arrives. But it's not just Peter who's there. Jesus is there in Peter, and Jesus, through Peter, sees the man, this man who is about to go beyond the beautiful gate and into life. Peter looks at him intently, we're told, and says, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. We're told that as Peter helped him up, his muscles in his ankles and his legs were restored, and he got up and he leapt and he danced and he sang out praises to God. He went through the gate and into the temple and into life. He was standing upright, made new. His friends couldn't get him through that gate. Moses and the prophets couldn't get him through that gate. But Peter seizes this opportunity to speak to the crowds. He urges them, not to look at him and John. He tells them, why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our power or godliness? He wants them all to know that it was done through the power of the resurrected Christ, the Messiah. Jesus is the one that made the lame man walk 
And he's the one that takes him and us beyond the beautiful gate and into life. He's the one, the only one who can do that for all of us who are stuck there, unable to go any further. He alone can restore us so that we can walk upright. There's only one person that can take us beyond and into the life that we were made for. It's Jesus. He comes and he sees us and he speaks life to us, inviting you to stand up, to walk with him. In his presence there is life where we are all made new. Let the abiding life of Christ lift you up and take you in far beyond any gates, far beyond anything you've ever imagined. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul today. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Hello, Heather and Hunter. This is Nora from Switzerland. Thank you so much for your encouraging words. They really mean a lot to me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Nora, for the encouragement. And thank you for using that voicemail app that we have on our webpage. And it's easy peasy if you're listening and you want to do the same. Just go to dailyradiobible.com and leave us a voicemail. Well, before I leave you and head out into this beautiful fall day here in Hillsboro, Oregon, I'd like to ask you to do us a favor, do us a real solid here by going to the webpage I just mentioned and leaving us a review. Just click on that review link and you will be ready to go. We appreciate so much how you have shared this podcast with the people in your life. In fact, most of you are here because someone invited you. And to that I say, amen and way to go. This review thing that I'm talking about is just another way of sharing that helps others to find out what we're doing. And I believe that there are so many out there that are in need of just a little encouragement, someone to come alongside and show up with them in the Word each day. So thank you for leaving those reviews in advance if you haven't done that yet. And thank you again for sharing this podcast with the people in your world. Well, let's all head off into the world now, my friends. Let's go forward into that world with God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.